Hello folks, welcome along to the vlog. We're brewing this uh, Kvik beer today, the New England IPA, using the uh, Horn and Dog Kvik uh, Bjorn yeast. And we've got all the hops weighed out. Yeah, five kilos of El Dorado and Citra. If only you could smell it. Beautiful stuff. Anyway, I'm still to dig the mash tun out. It's been a really, really slow sparge on this beer because of all the wheat, malt and oats. But as you can see, we have another project on the go at the moment, I'm afraid. Yes, so Gemma was cleaning some casks the other day and we kept getting a misfire on the caustic tank. The pump was not playing ball. Now, I'm meant to be building a new cask washer. It was going to be a project for January, February when everything slows down in the brewery and in the pub. But, uh, well, it's been relatively slow all year because of COVID, to be fair. Of course, on the flip side, we don't want to be spending money when we can make do amend for the time being until we've got spare cash. So... I'm kind of in two minds as to whether or not to get a new cask washer up and running. Um, but considering we're going into a new lockdown again tomorrow, I think what I'm going to do is refurb this one. I've got the pump out on the healing bench down there. And this absolute abortion of wires, honestly. Uh, this first went together in about 2015, so... It's evolved quite a lot over the years. And, um, yeah, I think it's about time, knowing what I know now, which is considerably more about how electronics work, we're going to take all this out. We're going to tidy it all up. We're going to put an RCD in. We're going to get a new box. And we'll run with this machine until... We go back to normal in terms of COVID and then we'll build, or just before we get there, you know, as on the run up, we'll build a brand new stainless steel chassis, stainless steel tanks, pumps off to the side, easy access drain valves, all that kind of whiz, pop, bang, if you know where I'm coming from. So even though this is a mess, this isn't going to be today's job. I'm just going to pull everything out so I've got wires for the pump. This, for instance, is just a supply cable for the switch for the acid tank, which then runs into there. Uh, coming out here, you've got some twin and earth coupled with a couple of blue cables, which the twin and earth is actually powering the three kilowatt element in the caustic tank. The uh, neutral or the blue single cable there is running to a float valve which operates this relay which isolates the pump when there's no liquid in the tank so all that kind of stuff and then this is just an overcurrent breaker it's not actually an RCD uh, so there's actually no earth protection on this machine at all apart from just the main earth uh, the main RCD on the fuse board which is quite sensitive, 300 milliamp tends to work, but I like to have things protected locally as well now when I'm building stuff. And also we had the drain for the uh, rinse tank smack bang next to the pump start on and off for the caustic. And very often you hit the caustic by mistake instead of the drain and got a face full of caustic off the spray ball and the emergency stop has stopped working so about time we at least refurbished it realistically I'd like to expand it to include another rinse tank as well maybe on the end here and then we can go rinse caustic rinse acid fill which would be really handy but maybe that will happen on the new build not this one anyway let's flash over to the healing mat or the healing bench, as they say, and have a look exactly what's going on with this pump. I might have to pop you on a tripod for this to work properly. 
So I've just had the cliff quick test out and she runs, so there's nothing wrong with the motor, but she's uh, she's not pumping water. So let's get a pry bar and see if we can't liberate something. While well, I've got the camera in my hand, that's probably gonna be a no looking at this. Yeah, so I had a look under here as well. There's a lot of crusty crud kind of flaking out underneath. She's kind of telling me that we may have uh, a spent O-ring and then obviously that could have got chewed up in the mechanism or it's been leaking as well, so. Oh, this is a two-handed job, said the actress to the bishop. So uh, I'm going to get the tripod and we'll come back to this. So how do you like them apples? Let's get into a bit of brute force and uh, ignorance. I should do the job. No. How about we crack her like a nut? No. Come on. Liberate yourself. Oh gosh. Well, it looks like I have somewhere there. This housing looks like magnesium. If not aluminium. So I know. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I know aluminium is susceptible to corrosion by caustic. I'm looking at this, folks. It looks like... Looks like the uh, magnesium is too. I think it's just broken under the, under the driver there. I'm deforming all of the pressed stainless steel shell. So, something's really grabbed it. Gotcha. Right, let's have a look. Can you see into here? Right, well, I don't really know if there's anything, a little bit of, uh, you know what that is, don't you? That's a little bit of uh, stainless steel scouring pad and some other bits so here is if it'll come here's the o-ring let's just get this down focus a little bit better for all of us to see there's the o-ring yeah it's good as new that it's got another thousand miles in it yet won't worry about that too much so that'll do and then this section here oh, should liberate as well. So if you've not seen into a Clark pump before, I do recommend these for uh, building a cask washer. Um, usually they stand up to the caustic really well and this one is, well this pump's never been changed, the acid pump has. This pump's five years old, this caustic pump. So as you can see, Apart from a little bit of rust inside her, she's doing fine. And obviously, the liquid is kind of ducted down, in, and then through the uh, the rotor, which is here, and then that's forced outwards, and uh, and kind of through this section if you if you get me drift so it sucks it in in through the center and through there pushed outwards by the rotor and then eventually off of this it finds itself uh, pressurizing essentially this large bell section and forcing its way 
out through there. So I wouldn't use these as hygienic pumps for moving wood or anything like that around because obviously, as you can see, even though it says stainless steel and it looks like stainless steel on the outside, it's obviously, you know, had a bit of a hot supper in there. So I'm gonna give that a bit of a clean out before we put it back together. Here we are. Now this O-ring here, this I believe seats, yeah, in the back here. This normally lives in the back of this section to prevent um, loss of suction, if you know what I mean. Uh, that looks like it's rotating all right. So shall we just give it a quick go? So get the quick test out. Uh, neutrale. We'll put the earth in because you never know. We might have a stray connection somewhere. And it's probably going to just jump off the bench, so I'll just hold it. Hey. I said she's running fine. I can feel lots of crustiness on there as well, so there's definitely a little bit of. Uh, caustic that's kind of come out of solution well I say definitely a little bit in fact if I just uh, get you down on there all this all this is crystalline sodium hydroxide here so we kind of need to scoop all that out as well before we go any further into the repair but if that's all it is just an o-ring and a bit of a clean up of the old uh, bell housing there then I think that's something that we'll be able to do no uh, no problemo normally what happens on these pumps if you're using them in an acid environment which uh, we actually have been doing I've got one of these for the pump uh, to pump the caustic one to pump the acid the acid tends to eat away at this little bush in here that's brass and uh, that wears away completely and then the shaft the drive shaft that runs through the bell housing into the pump motor proper is actually made out of uh, stainless steel so that lasts that's not a problem yeah I wonder if we've got some crackage happening there as well by the looks of it you can see that in there um, so yeah, I've ordered, you can order these as a spare from Clark and uh, they're about 10, 15 quid each. Uh, but it saves you buying a new pump, so uh, it's definitely worth getting them. So let's see if I can find an O-ring and see if we can get this up and running again. Maybe get another five years out of her. So I've cleaned the whole thing up, but I've noticed that this stainless back plate which is against this magnesium framework. Here's one that I destroyed earlier, if you like. This is an old one, a very old one. And that's in pieces, but I saved these pieces for spares. So you can see that that magnesium back plate, what's happened is just around here, it started to kind of corrode. And as it corrodes, much like iron, it expands and it, it basically popped it popped the uh, the back plate up like that. You see that? So this wasn't a flat surface for the O-ring to sit on, which must have caused some leakage to happen. Definitely some distortion there anyway. Uh, so I'm hoping to try and get this impeller off and then the back plate, but the problem is it's seized onto the shaft. So what I've done is I've got a little bit of acid in the shot glass here, and I've just been applying it with a pipette just to the top of the uh, little brass, brass, brass bushing. So if I just clean it up a little bit, you'll kind of see what we've got in there, there we go. And then if I just uh, dab it dry with it a bit of, little bit of tertiary, and then we get a bit more of the acid, you'll be able to see. 
as we pop the acid on we start to see start to see a reaction happen there we go So I'm hoping what's happening with this is that the uh, the acid is eating into the brass and liberating the shaft from the uh, well it's not quite a nut here's an impeller a brand new impeller and you can see that it's got this brass insert threaded the trouble is, of course, with this. Let's have a look. What does that say? The trouble with it is, uh, it's got no, no nut to grab hold of and undo it. So that's uh, polypropylene glass fibre reinforced, less than twenty percent. I'm guessing PPO, polypropylene. I would imagine. Yeah, so that's the problem. There's no real way of grabbing hold of it. I can't fit the mole grips in there because this is too much of a narrow uh, opening. I can grab hold of it with some long nose pliers and I can also grab hold of it with some ordinary pliers, but I can't squeeze it tight enough. So I was kind of hoping, as you can see, I've been experimenting over here, kind of hoping to kind of grab hold of it there put the pliers in the vise, tighten it down and then twist it off but yeah it's not really working how I'd intended anyway I'm gonna let this do its thing we'll get into the stage out here now where I have to add the hops we're chilling down we're at 87.2 as soon as we hit 80 putting all these hops in for an half an hour steep so we've got it clamped up and uh, we've managed to liberate the impeller I'm really quite pleased with myself getting that off of there to be honest that was not easy so what I want to do now is just safely dispose of that acid so we don't accidentally get it on anything and then see if we can remove this mechanical I know the lighting's not great over there but we'll we'll give it a go get the screwdriver see if we can remove this mechanical seal just needs kind of just tweaking from one side to the other, nice and slowly. Don't want to tear any uh, any of the rubber. Otherwise, the whole thing, framing, the whole thing <laughs> will just be knackered. There we go. So that's off. I don't look in too bad a nick. To be fair. I think that will go back on, no bother. And then I'm hoping that that is enough. Yes, it is. Oh, you little beauty. Absolutely wonderful. So there's the ceramic part there of the mechanical seal. So we'll give that a clean up as well, but we don't want to be removing that. Here's a little shield for the uh, for the motor and then I think if I undo these tie rods here four of them this top plate section will come away then I'll be able to either take it to the sink and clean it up good and proper or substitute it for one I made earlier the one that I wrecked earlier but the difference with this is, you'll note that these holes are holes, whereas on this one, I've turned them into slots, so I can slide it into a little fixing mechanism on the cask washer. So I'll probably 
just tidy this one up we'll take them tie rods out and give it a tidy up so let's have a look let's get it done right we've assembled it one thing I haven't done is replaced that o-ring so I'm hoping it's not going to be a big issue but I think it'll be fine without it anyway the moment of truth a bit of a dry run on the quick test it sounds good so let's take that off and the next test will be with it being in position with some water in but there we go I think uh, that's gonna give us a few more years of service or at least until we build the uh, the new cask washer right I've got to go and uh, start a transfer well if I had the camera in my hands when I opened that valve and dumped 10 kilograms of aroma hops oh it was a sight for sore eyes let me tell you I wish I could have preserved them and put them into another beer but hey hell so we've got the Kavir yeast on the go uh, that pumps ready to go back onto the cask washer when I've done some improvements we're gonna ferment this bad boy believe it or not at 32 degrees so I've just got to drop a tilt in there so I can keep an eye on it obviously up there but that's it folks I'm gonna sign out on the eve of the United States presidential election I'm obviously uh, completely unbiased being a Brit so uh, well I'll see you on the next vlog get the cigar out Joe